Objective Structured Practical Examination on Ophthalmic Anatomy You welcome to Dr. Sam's Anatomy Classes. So this is going to be an OSPE on extraocular muscles. Next you will be seeing a slide, an animated slide with a cushion attached. So you will be given 30 seconds to read the cushion and answer it. Be prepared. So the muscle producing the movement of the right eye is Okay, so now I'll be telling you about the actions of extraocular muscles. This will help you learn it. You must be knowing that there are seven extraocular muscles. Out of those seven, six muscles, they act on the eyeball for the movements of the eyeball. But there's one muscle that's levator palpebrae superioris, LPS, and that is to elevate the upper eyelid. So right now we'll be talking about the six extraocular muscles which are attached to the eyeball for its movements. So you can, you know, you can overlap this image to this image, that is the image in question, right? So here you can imagine it's the nose, this is the right eye, this is the left eye, right eye and the left eye. Okay, now look here. When you like, attack the eyeballs, so like, you know, move the eyeballs towards the nasal side right so that is called adduction of the eyeballs and that is being done by the medial rectus of both the eyes right and left but remember that there is some role of superior rectus and inferior rectus as well in adduction of the eyeballs right now looking outwards and laterally let's say lateral deviation or temporal deviation or abduction of the eyeballs so when you move your eyeballs laterally outwards right that's the action mainly performed by the lateral rectus of both the eyes then there is some role in outward movements is also by the inferior oblique and superior oblique as well these two muscles also help in slight you know movement of the eyeball laterally now if it's asked what are the muscles that elevate the eyeballs so there'll be two muscles superior rectus and inferior oblique in dipping down the eyeball like lowering the eyeballs downwards right so there'll be two muscles involved inferior rectus and superior oblique right i'm making you learn this for the adduction of the eyeball there will be three muscles and for little Movement of the eyeballs or abduction of the eyeball, there will be three muscles. Elevation, two muscles. Depression, two muscles. Adduction of the eyeball, three muscles. Abduction of the eyeball, three muscles. Now, I'm telling you all the questions that can be asked. To make you learn this, remember the two recti, superior and inferior rectus, as the name suggests, they will be elevating and depressing the eyeballs as well as they will also cause adduction. So, because this is what I am teaching is about the intact, integrated, all the muscles acting together, right? There is no palsy as such. So, when all the muscles act together, there is like, a, you know, a combined effect. So, in this eye, in a normal eye, superior rectus will elevate and adduct the eyes and that is called supromedial Right? looking upwards and medially that's by superior rectus and looking downwards and medially towards the nose towards the tip of the nose that is by inferior rectus right make sure that you know this this is when all the muscles are intact right similarly in the case of left eye superior rectus inferior rectus will be you know 
elevating the eyeballs upwards and medially in case of severe erectus, depressing the eyeball and adducting is by inferior erectus. Now look here, talking about the obliques, inferior oblique and superior oblique. You can see here very well that their action is opposite to their names. Inferior oblique should actually, like you know, depress the eyeball. Superior oblique should actually elevate the eyeball. That is like what you know a beginner should think about as the name given to these muscles. But it's not happening so. So remember that these names, the nomenclature of these obliques, inferior oblique, superior oblique, is not according to their action. The name given to these muscles is according to the origin and the direction of the muscle fibers in relation to the globe. So that's why, because inferior oblique arises below to the eyeball and its fibers runs below the eyeball, right? So it's given the name inferior oblique. Superior oblique arises supromedially behind to this eyeball and then its fibers run and cross the globe of the eyeball above it, right? So that's why its name is called superior oblique. But the action produced by these muscles is according to the site of insertion of these muscles. Right? And the pull brought about by the, these muscle fibers. So, and if you want to know the details about these muscles, all of them, you can go into my playlist in the ophthalmic anatomy section. You will find, uh, you know, all these muscles in detail. So, right now, to answer this question and make you learn as well. So, remember that inferior oblique will elevate and after the eyeballs, like suprolateral gaze will be by inferior oblique in both the eyes. And infrolateral gaze, downwards and temporal side, it will be by superior oblique in both the eyeballs, right? So one thing you have understood about these actions, but there are other actions as well, and that is the rotation. That's the rotation of the eyeballs. This I'm drawing is the rotatory movements. Okay, so this you are seeing is, if you talk about the right eye, this is anti-clockwise movement or the movement of the eyeball outwards, towards the temporal side, right? So rotation of the eyeball outwards, towards the temporal side in an anti-clockwise direction when I'm talking about the right eye, because by convention, we generally learn things with the images and the diagrams of the right side. So with this, you remember that this... Uh, outward rotation of the eyeball is brought about and that is called extortion. Now, this movement that I have drawn in red color is called extortion. And the two muscles involved in extortion or the outward or the lateral rotation of the eyeball is brought about by inferior rectus and inferior oblique. So the two inferior muscles, inferior oblique, inferior rectus, they will cause the outward rotation of the eyeball or extortion of the eyeball. Okay. Now, now look here. So the blue color that I have used is for the rotation of the eyeball towards the nasal side and these rotations outwards and in, inwards rotation are happening along the anteroposterior axis of the eyeball. So this rotation towards the nasal side is called intorsion and in the right eye this will be clockwise. Right? So remember that the two muscles involved in intorsion are superior oblique and superior rectus. So the two superior muscles will rotate the eyeballs along the anterior posterior axis towards the eye, nasal side. Similarly, the two muscles, the two inferior muscles, inferior rectus, inferior oblique will rotate the eyeball laterally outwards towards the temporal side along the anterior posterior axis and that is called extortion. I hope you understood all the different movements about these muscles. Make sure you learn them well because there are a lot of many questions asked upon the MCQs asked upon the action of extraocular muscles. I have not discussed about paralysis of any of these muscles that you can learn from my playlist on ophthalmic anatomy. You know, in humans, we have this binocular conjugate movement of the eyes. Means both the eyes, this field of view 
is overlapping and between much of the field of view is overlapping and because you move the eyes parallelly in both in whatever direction you see you both the eyes move parallelly in that particular direction and that is called conjugate movements of the eyes so whenever you get such questions remember that muscles involved in the two eyeballs will be different so now let's talk about the different gazes according to the six directions mentioned above you can think about the gazes here so this one is upwards and towards the right so when you look upwards and towards the right in the right eye it will be the inferior oblique that will be working upon and on to the left eye it will be the superior rectus similarly if you're looking upwards and towards the left so in the right eye it will be this muscle superior rectus and in the left eye it will be inferior oblique now looking towards the right side so in the uh, while looking towards the right in your right eye it will be lateral rectus mainly like all the muscles mentioned here is the prime muscle it doesn't mean that you know as i told you already looking towards right with the right eye it means lateral rectus is predominantly acting upon but inferior oblique superior oblique they also have a role in this but if you took the single answer then lateral rectus moves the eyeball laterally and medial rectus at the same time of the left eye the medial rectus will pull the left eye towards the right side got it now similarly if you're looking on the left side your left eye it will be the lateral rectus that is pulling the eye on the left side and it will be the medial rectus on the right eye that will pull it towards the left side so that was about this horizontal movements now looking downwards and towards the right so here you're seeing is the right eye this movement is brought by superior oblique uh, on the left eye this movement is being brought about the inferior rectus now similarly here when you're looking downwards and to the left downwards into the left so in the left eye it will be superior oblique that will pull it downwards and outwards and in the right eye it will be inferior rectus this is moving the eyeball downwards and medially towards the tip of the nose got it okay now look here this is the image which you can correlate with the image in the question right so the gaze here is downwards and towards the left so this is the image which is in question okay so you got the answer now the muscle producing the movement of the right eye is right inferior rectus So I hope you've understood it. If you like it, share it, and subscribe it.